I am your host, Thermos Enzo. Joining me today is Silverquill. Repent! Repent, for the end is nigh! How so, my good sir? It's the start of season nine, which means it's the beginning of the end. Oh, hey, that's the title. Oh, uh, yay! And also, welcome back to the show, Silver. How are you feeling? Ah, uh, much improved. Much improved. Darn you, Karn Con Crud. Yeah, like, I heard there's a few ways to avoid the Con Crud, but it's a bit excessive. Like, it makes you feel like you have over OCD. What? Wash your hands every five seconds, never leave your hotel room, and, uh... Do not get within five feet of other people. No, it's not even that. But okay, start go. It starts in the airplane. Wipe down everything. Like wipe down the armrests, the table trays, and yeah, use your um wipe wet, wet wipe. What do they call it? Yeah, use wet wipes to wipe it off and clean your hands. And then when you get off, uh, just make it. It's over. It makes you feel like you have this acute sense of. OCD that's kind of maddening and makes you feel like you're crazy, but you won't get concrete, but people think you're special. I don't I think I have the energy for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand, I understand. And also joining us today is Safi. I'm back. I'm sorry. Hi. Welcome back. How was your trip with manga? Eh, it was pretty nice. Very quiet. No internet. It's junk. <laughs> Wait, I thought with the no internet <laughs> thing, you'll be happy. Like, haha, I am away from civilization. I do not need to deal with this Pokemans and whatever it is. No, that makes me extra sad, especially when my work consists of going on the internet and talking with people and hoping that they want to pay for my art. Which most of the time they do, fortunately. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, talking about the Pokemans, we have a Totera. Find a happy place, find a happy place. I have seen my nightmares in reality and I do not want them to come to real life. <laughs> okay, okay. Have you seen the Pokemon movie then? No, uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, you saw the so- you saw the Sonic trailer. Oh. Yes, I have seen that. I don't want to watch it again. What, the Sonic trailer? You haven't seen the Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer? I've seen it. Like, Jim Carrey's having a back pain. Yes, that's the that's the polite way of saying it. Oh yeah, because he's carried the whole movie on his shoulder. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> oh boy, no, but, uh, Pokemon movie. You seen it, right, Detective Pikachu? Yep. All of us seen it. Pika Pika. Yep. Oh my god, I can't wait. This is going to be fun. Uh, oh well, that'll be. I don't know. We're doing a movie review on Detective Pikachu. Future plan. I wish we got to do a review on Detective Pikachu. It's a fun movie. Well, now we have to. <laughs> like, oh man, we, 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 we have been stalling on Pony in the second part of the review and discussion podcast. So we need to get back to Ponies before we can do anything else. So like, yeah, but I think by the time that we are ready to review Detective Pikachu, the DVD and Blu-rays will be out. So I'd say perfect timing. Maybe. Anyways. Yeah, true that, true that. So... Anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 9, Episode 1 and 2, the beginning of the end, Part 1 and 2. So, in this first part, Princess Celestia and Princess Luna to decided to retire and hand off the ruling of Equestria to Twilight Sparkle and her friends. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun episode. Fun episode. So, before we get into it, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think, man? It's almost a declaration. We're in the final season... All bets are off because there's there's a whereas other intros hinted at events to come. This one's pretty explicit saying this will happen and this will happen and look forward to this. And I do. Plus, uh, without going into too much detail, I love the return and revision, re-envisioning of a certain character and uh, just setting the stage for more fun to come. The only uh, question on my mind is the initial premise, Celestia and Luna retiring. It's like, what? Yeah, that, that is a... But you know what? It does make sense. They have been at this for almost a thousand... Well, for Celestia, it's a thousand years and more. Uh, for Luna, it would be almost a thousand years. So they kind of deserve the break? Hmm? Well, I won't argue Celestia, but Luna was out of the picture for most of those thousand years. She kind of had a boo-boo. True, 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 true. I'm sure we'll get into this more. Yeah, true that, true that. And Seppi? Um, 
I kind of halfway disagree, though, with, like, Celestia's retirement. She doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so, because... You know what? I, I, I'm not going to go into it, because we'll save it for the show. We'll save it for the show. But other than that? Eh, I actually thought it was kind of fun. And just reliving all those tropes, it's like, yep, that's me. <laughs> Try lighting is definitely probably the most relatable thing in the show right now. <laughs> All right, then. All right, then. Tara, what about you? I really like this. I mean, first impressions, it had me shocked. I a certain scene had my jaw open, like, and shocked. And I'm kind of agreeing too on why Celestia and Luna retire when they didn't really do much. <laughs> I mean, they delegate Equestria, but even then, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, true. They didn't do anything like to defend Equestria. Uh, I, I ain't gonna jump to their defense anytime soon now. Uh, and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I highly enjoyed it. The new villain, Good Boy, was pretty cool. And there is a lot of things that we can cover later on. I mean, th there's a lot of things to talk about. And uh, what else? What else? What else? You know what? There is a lot. There's a lot. So uh, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go take a look. Welcome back. So, let's hop into the review. So, we start off with our heroes running towards Cantalot at breakneck speed. It seems that everybody has been summoned to the royal palace and an emergency royal summon. Ooh, what could it be? Which villain is popping up? What is going to happen? Ooh. You sound like Pinky, who still gets the biggest nightmare. Uh, with the spinny eyes. You know. Whee! Well, all I'm thinking is who framed Roger Rabbit. When I killed your brother, <laughs> I sounded like this. Oh my goodness! And now I see it, and I don't want to. I don't want to see that ever again. Nope, me neither. Uh -huh. Well, I've I've ruined it for you. Ha ha ha. Yes, I've seen Roger Rabbit. Please don't dox me. <laughs> well, talking about Roger Rabbit, right on a tangent. I, I seen it in the theaters when I was a kid and gosh that gave me horror when uh who who was his name? Uh, man, I forgot his Judge name. Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd went insane. Like, oh my god. And during that time I didn't even know that was him. Like the Back to the Future guy? Like, what? It was him? I didn't know. Uh shows me what I know. Anywho? Yes. Heroes getting called for action. And when they arrive at the castle uh, they asked the princesses, yo, what's up? What was going on? What happened? Like, who is trying to take over? Who Who is going to cause trouble? So the same Luna just says, ah, no, no, no. We just call you because, well, we have an announcement to make. We are going to retire and hand over power to you and your friends. Good luck! What a twist! So anybody have to say anything? Yes, I don't want Rainbow Dash in charge of uh, my dreams or my taxes. Agreed. <laughs> Oh, man. But th this is an interesting development. Like, suddenly out of the blue, uh, Twilight and her friends are going to be in charge of Equestria. And this caused Twilight to be in a panic. She hyperventilates. She says she's not ready. And she's just going, well, Twilight. Classic Twilighting. <laughs> Me before Babs come this year. <laughs> And now me before Bronicon this year. <laughs> I mean, at least they didn't pick Discord to rule Equestria. He was a he, he was a contender though. Oh yeah, he he wants to. He was. He, he wants to. Uh, but still, uh, Twilight says, I, "I'm not ready, yo. Like, I, I'm not ready. I, I'm just a kid. Like, I I got no idea what to do." So this is oh just... yeah, and you've also only got three days to do it. What? 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 Yeah, so Twilight, Twilight just panics and Rainbow Dash and her friends say like, yeah, we got this man, like, look at us, we save Equestria about a dozen times, so we can do, we can totally do this, like, yeah, like, look at how awesome I am, like, just give me a position where I can become the Ministry of Awesomeness. Well, I have to poll everyone. Hmm. Twilighting or Twily Nanas? Twily Nanas is much more fun. I like Twily Nanas. Okay. Torterra? Hmm. I, hmm, that's a good question. I, uh, I kind of like Twilight Nanas. 
Am I the only one who enjoys twilighting? Twilighting is a verb that is uh, much more serious in tone. Twilight Dynast is much more fun to say. <laughs> and Silver, you mentioned Twilight Dynast? Well, I just, whenever they say classic twilighting, <laughs> I just thought, Twilight Dynast, it just that's more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's fun. Like, But if you want to be serious, like uh, the defense minister, like, uh, excuse me, princess, are you all right? Oh, no, I am panicking. I am panicking. Oh, she's just twilighting. I'll come back later. <laughs> Today on Twilight Watch, the princess's twilighting rating is five. <laughs> On other news, Twilight Dynas is getting there, getting up there in votes. <laughs> and the equestrian security w- warning is up to Blackwatch Plaid. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, Twilight kind of panics, and everybody or every one of her friends says, "We got this. We did, we sang that song in the movie, so we got this. So it's all good. We we can do this. We can do this." And Celestia and Luna uh, have. All of their confidence put on this. And in the next scene, we go back to the castle and Twilight is twilighting hard. Discord says, like, you uh, <laughs> you can do this, I think. And yeah, you know what? <laughs> this is going, we're just going to do this whole song and dance where Twilight's going to panic. You guys are going to give her the confidence to do so and blah, blah, blah. You know what? I'm out. <laughs> Although, are we superfluous now? Discord is doing our job for us. It's like he knows. It's kind of the final season, so this happening is kind of funny. It's becoming self-aware. I know. We're beyond the fourth wall now. Yeah. And while Twilight is panicking, Applejack reassures her. Ravity comes in with a glass of water. And Twilight says, like, wait, what? You, you guys are... You, you guys know what I'm going through right now? And Pinkie Pie says, oh, classic Twilight. Like, like she's a verb. <laughs> Of her, but as we voted, Twilight Nana's. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Though, Safi, you're not alone in liking Twilighting. I just happen to prefer Twilight Nana's a little bit more. Yes, it's much, okay. it's much more fun to say. But anywho, um, Twilight just says something like, oh, um, what are we going to do when uh, there's a huge uh, threat looming Equestria? How are we going to ask the princess for help? And I think who? Applejack brought it up and says... Oh. No, Rainbow Dash. <laughs> yeah. And Rainbow Dash, yeah. Rainbow Dash brought it up and says, like, uh, since when did we ever ask for the princesses for help? Like, um, who was the one that dealt with Nightmare Moon? Who was the one who dealt with Discord? Who was the one that dealt with Sombra the first time he was around? And Chrysalis. And also when that time when Starlight was evil and then... Uh, Chrysalis again, and then uh, Cozy Glow, and then don't forget about that uh, Storm well, King person. Well, technically, Chrysalis again, um, you know, Starlight actually dealt with that. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, don't forget the Storm King, and then don't forget about Sunset Shimmer, and also Dazzling, and also... <laughs> okay, well, we get it, yeah. moving on. Well, do Flem and Flam count? <laughs> They're the penultimate doom of Equestria, I say so. I, f- I feel like Twilight should have an arrest on site for those two. <laughs> but what did they do wrong? A lot of things. Apparently. <laughs> I mean, when somehow they're worse in the pecking order than t Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention t Rex. But <laughs> still, uh, they're, they're two big con men. But still, once they brought this up, I, I, I feel like the first episode of season nine is, is, is really self-referential, where... They just brought up a lot of the things that we would say, like, um, where were the princesses when this happened or that happened, and so on. Oh, Pony of Shadows, yeah, this, there's a lot we miss. <laughs> well, the funny thing is you can actually say where the princesses were a lot of the time, and sometimes it's complimentary. Like when the Crystal Heart shattered, they kept the storms of the North at bay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When Discord had all the main six, uh, well, Discord did. Mm-hmm. It was Celestia who sent support via making Spike sick to his stomach. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> but most of the time, they've delegated to the ponies. We haven't really been sure. They've been chilling in Canterlot or captured. Usually captured. Or captured in Canterlot. Mm-hmm. 
But there's also the part where, okay, uh, season two, Chrysalis came in. Celestia tried to do something and failed. And Luna was playing video games. Yeah, she comes back when everything's done. Well, there's actually one thing I was kind of expecting after they recapped all these villains. The only thing that was missing in that scene was someone popping in saying, Continuity! <laughs> one day, maybe. But not today. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it seems that everyone there is confident that they'll do the job right. And yeah, it's okay. We, we can do this. We can do this. And talking about villains, we are introduced or we are reintroduced to our villains and what they're doing now. We got Queen Chrysalis who is going Cocoa for Cocoa Puffs. We got yeah. <laughs> we got T-Rex and Cozy Glow in Tartarus. And oh wow, Cozy is being really annoying. Really, really annoying. And well, I find her actually... M- I find her more delightful now, now that, it, that they're not keeping up any pretense. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And also, we get a summoning sign, and who pops out but Sombra. Okay, Sombra, why are you hacking the MLP universe again? <laughs> uh, no, no comment. But anywho, <laughs> we transition to a evil cave-like place, and... T-Rex and Cozy Glow appear, so does Chrysalis. And Chrysalis asks, why the hell did you bring me here? And T-Rex and Cozy just says, nah, we didn't. Like, I thought you were the one. And yeah, they, they interact a bit until there's a shadowy figure that pops up. And it's Sombra. Yes. Looking fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> the king has returned. Oh, I love that GWK reference. <laughs> yep. Uh, there's no, there's no way that we can well one up that. So let's not try to. So yeah, every everybody arrives. All the villains that are alive, at least, uh, appears alive. I think Sombra was dead. But anyway, um, they arrive and they wonder like, who the hell summoned us? At first, I thought it was Sombra that. Uh, summon them for stuff, but no, 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 no. We are introduced to the baddest villain of them all. Good boy. The father of monsters. Yes. Who's the mother? Uh, don't know. <laughs> Maybe we'll never know. You see, when a devil goat and a... Oh, uh, no, no, evil, no, no, no. When they, when they love each other evil very much... Changes. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. When a goat devil and evil enchanters love each other very much, uh-huh. all of Equestria burns. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, no. But anywho, we are... Morbid. I like it. Yeah, but anywho, we are introduced to the good boy, which is Krogar. And Silver, since you are the, well, only one out of all of us that catch the special, <laughs> uh, mind explaining to us who is Krogar? Are you saying I'm old? No, you... I think he was going for that. I mean, No, no that's you. You're... That is you. <laughs> You planned this from last week. Who, me? Yes. I didn't plan no such thing. Go check the records. We talk about it. <laughs> oh, Silver, he's oh. lying. Oh, <laughs> he Tartara, meant to call no, you I... old. Oh, no, I think... Yeah, I think really, you're... that's my job. <laughs> I think your nose or snout is growing. <laughs> no, that's just my tree. Oh, God. Oh, are you happy to see me? <clears throat> well, I am. <laughs> oh, Norman, we learned something new about you today. Norm- <laughs> Norman's I... gonna realize what he said. It's like, no, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm just letting it go, man. Oh, let it go, let it go. <sighs> Pretty sure he'd never let Bayonetta go. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is just repeating anyway. <sighs> do, do I need to get out my Bayonetta picture that I made back in February again? No, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. <sighs> All right, well, Grogar, you you do that. Do it. Okay. Oh, no. Do I'll it. do it when he least expects it. <laughs> Go ahead, Norman. Oh, I think it was Silver who was going to explain uh, to us newbies who Grogar is. Mm-hmm. Oh, Grogar. Okay, so here's the here's the spiel with G1 Grogar. Way back in time, there was this dark city called Tambalon, and Grogar was the ruler of it. He had uh, a donkey sidekick named Bray, who I believe was voiced by the same actor who did Slimer in the real Ghostbusters. Oh, that's cool. Basically, he set it up so that any time a unicorn teleported, they were whisked to Tambalon and imprisoned. And once all the, all the unicorns were captured, he sent out his armies to capture everyone else. 
The goal was that Tambalon would vanish back into darkness and take all the ponies with him, with it, while he would remain in the real world to conquer everything. Now, for some reason, hidden within Tambalon was this giant bell, and if it could be rung, Tambalon and he would vanish. Now, why he kept it hidden, but he didn't keep, like, bracers or or destroy it, and you were never really clear on why things were the way they were. Or the rules involved. I will say this generation's Grogar is much more consistent in his rules and uh, limitations. But Grogar, I think he was more a threat because of what he represented. You know, the dark city. And he has this, he has this lizard anthro, anthropomorphized lizard army, which made him a pretty great threat. And he actually did succeed in capturing all the sea ponies, all the uh, regular ponies. What were they called? Grungles. Grungles? Wait, the ponies were called Grungles? Nope. They, there was a race of uh, creatures that were allies to the ponies oh. called Grungles. And, of course, the three human comrades, like Megan. Mm, all right. Yes, there was a show of My Little Pony where humans were in the pony world. It's every fanfic author's dream. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so Grogar has always been dark and intimidating and pretty evil looking. I mean, at least by 80s villain standards. This Grogar, he's got more of a slouch to him, though. He needs he needs to learn proper prop posture. Mm. The old Grogar knew how to stand tall and look fearsome. <laughs> yeah, and the, hearing your brief explanation of G1 versus G5, I, I can see some of the elements that they're reusing. And the bell thing, it's... They, they reuse the bell, but not in the way that it's meant in G5. Like, in G5... The bell that he used is kind of his amplifier, or uh, how do you put it? He put some magic in it to save for later or something like that? That's what he did, right? Yeah, it contains part of his power. Also, the <laughs> pony who undid him, Gusty the Great, was a G1 character. Gusty? Really? Ye. Oh, wow. Hmm, the more you know. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I actually kind of did my research, though, before... Uh... Like, after I watched, like, the beginning to the end, it's like, I looked at this character and thought, this has to be, like, a G1 or some earlier generation character that I've just never heard of. So I looked him up and saw a few clips. It's like, okay. Okay. Yeah, that bell's going to come into play later somehow, isn't it? Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> looks like it. It has and certain it did, ring to it. It was the opposite that I expected. But anyways, moving on. So... From what I'm hearing, this is kind of cool. This is a really good callback and reusing uh, what assets they have from way back when, which is really interesting. And the sea ponies, well, I have to say that they reuse that in a really smart way where the sea ponies are actually the hippogriffs, which is cool. Which is cool. <clears throat> but anywho, getting back on track, Grogar just tells the villains... You guys are losers. You know that each and every one of you failed in conquering Equestria. And why is that? Do you know why you lost? And, well, Chrysalis says that... Um, because they cheat. Yep, they cheated because they use aimbots. Uh, T-Rex says that they're annoyingly lucky. Just, just like, like my match in Overwatch. <laughs> and uh, Cozy just says, I'm a kid. <laughs> I got no reference for that. <laughs> Are you, though? <laughs> but, anywho. So, all of the villains uh, knew or have heard who Grogar was. Grogar was this ancient evil from way back when. And T-Rex says he knew him when he was a kid. Uh, Chrysalis heard of his antics. Sombra says, like, oh, yeah, I heard of you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I've heard of you. So... Cozy here just like what I haven't heard of you and if uh, Tirek is Tirek is old when he said he's heard you were heard of you when you were a kid so you have to be really really ancient. Yeah, Cozy really uh, is stress is uh, dancing the line here. <laughs> you you it's like sorry. no offense, you look great. It's like if you have to say no offense, that you really should rephrase. Mm. But you have to admit that Cozy here is kind of out of her element, if you really look at it. Well, she's not in a position where she can manipulate anyone. So 
Instead, she's trying just to appear flippant. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Grugar here tells the backstory that, yo, I was the guy who created all of the monsters. You can call me Papa Monsters. And I uh, wreak havoc all over Equestria. And uh, from who? I think Sombra. He says before Equestria was Equestria, it was just farmlands and plains and mishmash of whatever it is. Not like today. So that's kind of interesting to hear. A bit of Equestria history. Yay. <clears throat> but I have to ask you guys. When Grogar says that he was the father of monsters, does that count Discord? Oh, that'd be great. Grogar Discord. makes his power. I am your father. That's not true. That's impossible. Wait a minute, I thought you didn't watch Star Wars. Oh, I don't, <laughs> but I know that reference because it's pop culturally everywhere. Wait, did, did uh, manga force you to watch the uh, Star Wars trilogy? Or... Nope. Oh, wow. Oh, manga. <laughs> Come on, you had one job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get away with this stuff. <laughs> not until BronyCon, where I can tease you mercilessly about it. <laughs> See, Silver gets angry at Norman for Norman calling Silver old, but doesn't get angry for you not watching Star Wars. <laughs> tsk, tsk, tsk. I've, I've learned that, that Sapphire is a cultural wasteland. <laughs> hey, at least I've seen Back to the Future. I'm pretty sure oh, everyone we... has. <laughs> la de frickin' da! <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to find some relevance. <laughs> I have none. But... I'm sorry. Please. Oh, shoot. Oh, you can, you just have to watch Star Wars! But, but... What if I don't want to watch Star Wars? In Honestly, at show. this point, I could imagine, like, Silver, as soon as, like, the vending hall is closed, he just drags me <laughs> to, like, a room or whatever, <laughs> and then just forces me and watch Star Wars. Oh, my. That sounds like a bad fanfic. Now, we'll just make you stay at your table and play it while... <laughs> oh, I'll get a giant projector and project it all over your table. <laughs> Not a good idea. No! I could get kicked out for that! <laughs> Probably. Or I would. <laughs> nah, man. By, but, by this point, everybody at BronyCon will say, Oh, that's silver. Although, but Safi, you will watch Star Wars. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. <laughs> your quotes don't work on me, sir. But you know it's a quote. <laughs> Uh, boys, but, yeah, but, anywho, but, but anywho, getting back on you track. Gotta, you gotta do it, Safi. Silver recommended me to watch uh, Citizen Kane, and I did it, and that was actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, getting back on track. Grogar proposed an alliance between the villains, stating that you know why the ponies won? Because they had friendship. We should do that. Yeah, we should they all said be teamwork, friends. Not friendship. Yeah, there's a difference. Teamwork. Oh, yeah. Anywho, yeah, teamwork. We should do that. Yes. We shall do the team of the working. Yes. Except that he... he I love his, his teamwork recruitment. I demand that you work with me. I demand that we be friends. Oh, he took Iron Will's classes on friendship <laughs> making. <laughs> oh, no. I demand that we change... I demand that we exchange email contacts and be friends on Facebook. What? You do not have Facebook? Go make one now! I destroy your Facebook. Ha! I'll, I'll punch, punch you in the, the Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, Gro Grogar... <laughs> I, I do like this. I, I, I really like this. Grogar has been analyzing the opponent's tactics. He's been researching on ways that they have won and uh, came to the conclusion that the only reason why Twilight and her friends won was because they had teamwork. They were friends. So for us to defeat them, we shall use their own tactics against them. And this reminds me, okay, funny thing, this reminds me of the My Little Pony comics, the annual. Remember that one, Silver? Yes, uh, with the power yes. That was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, they they were actually friends. They were actually buds. <laughs> yeah. Until the power ponies messed with their heads and destroyed their <laughs> self esteem. Our heroes, everyone. Yep. But this is kind of cool too. Like what Grogar is proposing here is something really that hasn't been done a lot in media. Probably it's been done, but not in the sense of uh the good guys are doing this, so let's do it. I think what uh the 
Legion of Doom did it in Justice League. So that's something cool to reference. And for people who got no idea who the Legion of Doom was, they're a group of DC villains uh, composing of Lex Luthor, Gorilla Grodd, uh, Cheetah, who else? Scarecrow, Sinestro, Bizarro, mm-hmm. other guy ending in O. Uh-huh. So there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Hmm. Well, you could also think of the League of Super Evil. Who's that? Uh, it's a show I kind of remember. I know I don't remember the characters' names, but I know that uh, <laughs> the voice actor Scott McNeil was the main uh, character slash villain. Mm. Okay. Oh, uh, all right. Another one. The Sinister Six. Yeah, I remember them. The Sinister Six. Ah, yeah, Spider Man. Yeah. Spider Man's enemies. Yeah, Spider Man's enemies. The Sinister Six. So yeah, this this idea has been done before, but in MLP doing it here, it'll be interesting to see what they can come up with. I was, I was expecting is that next thing you know, Grogor starts breaking in a song about how he wants to take down the rulers of Equestria and be king of Equestria. You know, kind of like the Lion King, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But funny thing here is that when he mentioned uh, the line that, you know, where every, like, oh, I will conquer Equestria, Equestria will be mine. He doesn't say, will be mine. He, he said that it will be ours. So, hey, this guy's not bad. He's thinking about the end game, not the what should we call this? He's thinking about the group, but not himself, which is something to admire. Wait, he's, if he's thinking about the end game, does that mean he just wants Peter Parker back? Nah, man, he finds Peter Parker annoying. Bloody millennials! And I, I don't feel so good. <laughs> am Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> and I am Hulk. And I am Torterra. And Steven. And I'm Sombra. And I don't care. <laughs> and I'm Sombra and I'm fabulous. <laughs> You're sober? Never. Here's the thing. When I Oh, before that. Uh, Sombra says, you know what? I, I, I do not agree to this. Like, no, this sucks. I want to rule Equestria alone. Equestria will be mine, 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 mine. Me. Mine alone. Me. Yep, he's turned into stingy. He's scaring me. So Grogar just says, okay, fine. You want to do it your way? You want to do it alone? Go ahead. Go try. But if you fail, I will personally put you into the dirt where I found you. And with that, Sombra monologues about how how fabulous I am and I will conquer the Crystal Empire by my lonesome and I will use my shadow powers to kill everyone. Die, die, die. And then Grogar's just like, you know what? You're out. (laughs) Yep. To the Christian Empire, here we go. And while that's happening, our heroes, or mostly Twilight panics, set the list, and Starlight comes in and just says, Okay, what's going on? Oh, Spike explains the situation, and Twilight's going Twilight. Alright, okay, let me see. I, I, I'll try and do something. And she walks up to Twilight. Twilight says, Oh, good, you're here. Okay, here's the deal, are like, uh, I'm going to be the ruler of Equestria. I need you to be the headmistress of the school. Take over everything and go, go, go. Yeah, right. Good on you. You, you. you can do this. You can do this. Starlight just says, you want me to take care of the school? Do you not remember what happened the last time we did that? I almost destroyed the school. Like, Discord came in and created a havoc and whatnot. Like, did, no, like, I'm a poor choice. And Twilight just says, oh, Starlight... I trust you, you can do this, no problem. Like, you have the confidence, you just need to push, like, yeah, you can do this. And, uh, Starlight just says, ha, you just said the thing that you needed to hear. Yeah. And Twilight just says, yes, this is true, but running a school and a government is two totally different things. Now, be off with you, taking care of my school. I need to do politics. Yeah, in politics, you actually have a budget. Oh, no. Nope. Oh god, no. So, anywho. Nice try, Starlight, but nah, nah. Twilight is go beyond. She tried. Yep, she tried. I would have totally done the same thing. Yep. <laughs> she tried so hard and got so far. In the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Boys, that song is... What? That song is tw- 10 years old now? I don't know how old that song is. Yeah, but anywho, but anywho. Uh, we see... Probably 20 at this point. Nah, mm. man, it's not... Wait. 
No, 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 not yet. I just did a quick research. That song came out in 2003. Oh, wow. Pretty old. Well, I was closer than I thought. Yeah. But anywho, uh, we see the Crystal Empire, and Sombra's there, and Sombra is doing a good job by himself. Like, who would have thought that the ponies of Equestria are totally useless? Well, hey, I'll give props to the Crystal Guard. They are incredibly proactive in trying to stop him, including throwing spears, which means they ain't, they're they playing for keeps. Mm, true that, true that. Unlike two certain ponies. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Credit where credit is due, and the Royal Guards of the Crystal Empire are doing a pretty good job. Are doing a pretty good job. And, well, it seems that Sombra is much more powerful because she's using hacks. I call hacks, y'all. EMPing everyone. <laughs> Ain't fun. And meanwhile, I think this this drives me bonkers. People, when I when I talk about this in a video, people are like, stop being mean to Cadence and Shining Armor. Well, I'm sorry, but until they actually do something, <laughs> I've got nothing to work with here, people. But you know what? Okay, credit where credit is due. Shining Armor is trying to put up defenses. Cadence sent a emergency letter to Twilight and Oh, that's how the spell works. Like, um, any pony or any unicorn who has the spell can just send letters via uh, Dragonfire. So, that's cool. Robert, I have to challenge you on this. Shining Armor did not set up defenses. The ponies rushed him, mm-hmm. but he he didn't throw up a barrier around the castle or go to challenge Sombra like he did when they first met, uh, when Sombra was just a cloud. I mean... And Cadence is just like, oh, I could activate the Crystal Heart and zap him while he's marching down the main street. But no! Save us, Twilight! Save us! But the payload's still not there yet. Norman, you gotta <laughs> stop defending these useless characters. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I can't really say much, because Silver is pretty much saying what I, what I would say. Like, they're pretty much useless. <laughs> And remember, really, Norman, you want to stop the payload, you got to stop using long-range characters. Get some brawlers and get in there on the point. <laughs> yes, you got to get some action going. You got to be there and do it yourself. But I like Widowmaker. <laughs> Fine. You can have one Widowmaker, but you need to have a couple of folks on the point. Get yourself, get yourself some Orises on that point. Get on throw point. Up some, throw up some shields and start blasting. <laughs> okay, but anywho, but let's get back on track. So... Um, here, here's where I need to throw up some shields and start blasting. <laughs> but anywho, um, here's where I have to agree with you, Silver, because once Shining and Kaden says, "I thought you were taking care of the baby," no, you, no, like, I thought you were taking care of the baby. Oh no, a oh, baby! By that point, I'm just like, ah, oh, God, you idiots. I mean, well, Sarpa's taking care of the baby, although he's not supporting the neck as he should. I mean, that's just that. Do not hold a baby like that. Oh yeah, no, never. Hold Unless a baby you're like Hikashimishima, that. then that's a different case. What? No, he's a, he chucked his baby off a cliff. And look at how he is now. Angry, broody, and uh, incredibly annoying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do that. <laughs> Although we do, we do get to hear Flurry's first words, "Mama." Yes, I'm pretty sure that's the only good thing in that scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, other than Sombra, you know, holding the baby, but that's the only good thing I see out of the scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but well, sorry. that and Flurry, Flurry Heart uh, tries to take a chunk out of them. <laughs> Flurry, okay, okay, Flurry in this episode, she's going for headshots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Flurry Heart demands blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, our heroes are captured. The Crystal Heart has been taken and put onto the throne and something I don't know. And here's the thing where um, so- Sombra has chained the royal family, um, I think muzzled uh, Flurry. And the- yeah, he put muzzles on all of them. Oh, yeah. And demanded that the royal family <laughs> for him. Yeah, right there, Norman. Yes, I'm just trying to remember Superman. Zod. Kneel! <laughs> uh, so, so, kneel before Zod! <sighs> yes. <laughs> but anywho, uh, in Twilight's uh, castle, the main, well, everybody is emergency called to the throne room, and they just recap what happened. Cadence sent a letter to Twilight saying that Sombra's back, we need help. And 
they have to decide on what to do because the last time we did, uh, it was the Crystal Hearts power that did it. Now that Sombra's rushed back, we have to do something. And Discord says, why don't you just go there? You don't really need the elements and whatnot. And Twilight just says, or you could do it. You could use your chaotic power to banish him away. What about that? And Discord says, ah, you know what? I, I think my boiler is running. So see ya. My cup boileth over. <laughs> so any, you know, anyone, anyone say anything? Just that this is the start of Discord living up to his trickster status. Mm. Yes, the good trickster, which is interesting. Because, well, trickster, ne it's never as simple as good or bad. It's a shadow of the Joker. Not, you know, not the DC Joker, but a Joker. Uh, he wa He has a goal and he's willing to use trickery to get it. Sometimes it benefits you, sometimes it doesn't. It's not exactly a reliable source. True, 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 true. And in this scenario here, Discord... I, I don't know. I mean, do you have the feeling that Discord is just running around in circles because Grogarp approached him to join the League of Evil and he, well, just said no? Did you feel that? No, I'm I'm feeling... I'm feeling Discord's in, as in the dark as everyone else. Yeah, same here. Huh, all right, all right, all right. So, anywho... Uh, Discord says, now nah, you can do this on your own. See ya. And, well, the main six discover a plan or try to think of a plan. And, okay, we need the elements of harmony. We need the elements of harmony to get rid of Sombra. Discord just pops in and says, like, you don't really need the elements. You know that. I mean, you guys are strong enough without the elements. And Twilight just says, shut up, you Draconicus, and go back to your shower. She puts uh, Starlet in charge of the school. And the main six goes to the cavern to get their elements and power up. Yeah. At least they're not doing their rainbow powers up or anything like that. Oh, that's another thing that they didn't burn up. You know what? I have to question. Why didn't they burn that one back? Apparently, from what I understand, the mains and the over... It was too hard to animate. Really, you know? Well, I mean, they have huge flowing manes, a, a wide array of colors. Imagine trying to animate that on a regular basis. Mm, true that, true that. I mean, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering because why didn't they use this for the special and whatnot? It brings up a lot of questions, but yeah, it doesn't really matter because our heroes go on an attack to the Crystal Empire to save the royal family. And Sombra just says, huh, you ponies are useless. Here, let me put you into your worst nightmares. Aha, I have one. Yay! And Twilight just says, Nah, man. You, we distracted you long enough so that our buddies could, well, distract you. Yeah! Look at Spike. You never realized the seventh member of our team. Woo. And with that, Spike freaked Cadence. Cadence took the Crystal Heart and flew away while Flurry Heart just goes wild because she's just blasting every pony in the room. Another reason why Shining Armor and Cadence are useless. Not this time for Cadence. She brought the Crystal Heart back to the point and set everything back to normal. <laughs> and with that, Twilight and her gang, well, use a Kamehameha Blast and, well, blast away Sombra, which was kind of easy. Characters. End of episode. Yeah. Cakewalk. Yeah. So, yeah, with, with that, our ponies saved the day. Yay! That was that was anticlimactic, you know. Like I would have thought that the villain would be a tough challenge and whatnot, but you know, who knows, right? So, anywho, we go back to the Cave of Harmony, where Twilight and her gang just put back their elements, and yay, much fun to be had. Suddenly, Sombra pops in and destroy the tree, and with that, our episode ends. And that's the end of the series. Thanks, everyone. Have Yay. fun. Bye-bye. But nah, man. Like, we have part two to cover. But before we got, get into part two, what do you guys think? In a lot of ways, the conflict with Sombra, I think, would have been a two-part episode on its own. We got the hyper-advanced version. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh and it, and it was enjoyable. I mean, it, you know, there's great imagery. I was like, Flyheart is adorable when she has that helm on her head. <laughs> I mean, I know it's horrible brainwashing, but it's just so oversized. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine her trying to walk with that thing? Yeah. But at the same time, too, the 
the start of season nine was not bad. Like they set up the threat and whatnot, but uh, well, it, it was really cool. It was really cool. But this is not final thoughts yet. It's just what we thought about the whole part one. But anywho, in part two, uh, Toilet and the main, the rest of the main six struggled to come to terms with the destruction of the tree and elements of harmony. And King Sombra set his eye in conquering all of Equestria. Take that, Grogar. Nyeh. So anyway, we begin uh, part two with Sombra mocking our hero, saying that, Ha ha, I have tricked you all to revealing where your secret hideout is, and I have destroyed it. Ha ha. Ha 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 And Twilight is dejected because the elements are gone and oh no, we, what do we do? The elements are destroyed. Like, we, we can't do anything. And, you know... That's Twilight's philosophy. Rainbow Dash, she, she goes in for the kill. I thought it was Applejack first. No, they all yeah. do, except Twilight. <laughs> so... They'll do, well, either way, they, they make the charge. Yeah, they, they, they say that... Element, uh, element, no element, we don't care. You, you mess up, we mess with us, we mess with you. It's like, yeah. But the thing is, Sombra created a crystal wall and yeah, they're trapped in it. Twilight's magic does nothing and Sombra mocks them, like, or taunts them. Like, <laughs> I have won the battle. Oh, now with you out of the way, I can take control of this town that you call how Night Vale? Yes, I shall take over How Night Vale and soon the world. Of course, Sombra almost took the con- mind control our heroes, but decided not to because egos. And <laughs> I have to point something out: if he just took control of our heroes here and then, he would have won. Oh yeah, for sure. But that would require that he be perfectly objective and uh, emotionally stable in his judgments. And the whole point of a villain is that they're not stable. They're not uh, objectively viewing the situation. I know a lot of people get mad when the villain makes a very obvious blunder because of ego. But that's kind of the point. These are not balanced or healthy individuals. They are hugely flawed. True, true. But I have, I just have to point it out, man. Like what you say is true, but I just have to point it out because if it won't, if it ain't me, the audience at home will. And the thing is, Sombra could have won if he just took control of the ponies and be and made him on uh, made them turn on his side and prove Gorgar wrong. Like done. But nah, Ego has to play in like, haha, your trap and your worst fears are already happening. I don't really need to do anything about it. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. And yes, well, Sombra's gone. Our heroes, especially Twilight, kind of mops around and everybody looks at Pinkie Pie. And Pinkie Pie questions, why are you guys looking at me? And Rainbow Dash just explains, you're the pony that always finds a way to Find the positive things out of things. Like, this is where you usually do something. And Pinkie Pie says, Not this time. This is terrible. Like, I, I-, I got no idea. This is bad. Really bad. And our heroes kind of move around for a bit. Like, oh no, this is terrible. This is really, really bad. And Dirt hits Applejack. And she sees that Twilight is digging a hole. And Twilight says, I got no idea what I'm doing, but we can't stay here. We need to find a way to escape and everybody helps in and digs a hole out yeah how can they even dig though when they just have hooves well with pinky you've got that prehensile mane that becomes a drill (laughs) mine is a mane that will pierce the heavens (laughs) yeah that i'll accept (laughs) who the hey do you think i am (laughs) uh yeah Oh my, oh man, that that is so true, Silver. That is so true. And funny enough that you made that reference, uh, when they go to Ponyville and they see that every pony is being uh, brainwashed, I I had that feeling where Applejack is standing in front of Apple Broom and just in my mind says, Apple Broom, grit your teeth and step out of it. While she does a really, really strong haymaker. (laughs) Dang. Can you not see it? <laughs> I can, but that that requires punching your sister. It's like, no, Norman. Ah, ah. 
<laughs> I have more jokes to come on later. I mean, your brother maybe, but not your sister. But what if you're a girl and punching a girl is cool? What? Maybe. Depends on the situation. They're in control. You want to snap them out of it. So, a really, really strong... Okay, you know what? Punching is bad. I admit it. Punching is bad. What you should do is a German suplex. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. See? She agrees. So, anywho, all of Honeyville has been brainwashed. And they are now heading to Cantola to take it over. So, Twilight just says the magical word. What could go wrong now? And, yes... Remember the Tree of Harmony? Remember what it did? <laughs> it kind of hold back the, what you call this, evil tentacle forest thingy. So, yeah. Ever free forest, yeah. yeah. So that thing is kind of uh, encroaching on Ponyville and going to, well, it's going to be bad. Let's just say that. You're going to have a bad time. <laughs> yeah. Everything just gets worse and worse. Yep. So, with the two... <laughs> Uh, Rainbow Dash goes to the Flower Sisters shop and takes some gardening tools. And it seems that gardening is magic. Yay. Well, I just love that Rainbow Dash kept the axe for herself. I know. I, I saw that and like, huh, axe. I think Rainbow Dash, yep, yep, she has the axe. Mm-hmm. Groovy. Meanwhile, Twilight has to make do with a rake. <laughs> yep. Uh, but later on, she ditched the rake. But anywho, Sombra and his army of brainwashed ponies storm Cantalot. And here's the part where I have to just scratch my head and say, and say, why the hell didn't they raise the bridge? Why the hell they didn't drop down the gate? And, oh God. I don't know. Actually, can I just say something here? I think the Cantalot guards are more useless than the... Like, like the Crystal Empire ponies, they actually did something to protect their kingdom. Can't a lot of uh, guards? No, they just, oh no, we're gonna lose. He broke our horns. We can't do anything now. I don't think he even broke. Yeah, he blasted the horn away. Yeah. Still, uh, man. It's one of those things where, why did you raise the bridge? Why did you drop down the gate? Silver, help me. I can't because it makes no sense. Torterra's right. The Cantalot gods are off guard. Guards are awful. Agreed. Oh boy. So anywho, uh, Sombra storms the uh, throne room and sees like, wait, what? The princesses are gone? Ha ha! Easy win! C9, C9, lol! C9? Yes, that's what happened in Overwatch when you uh, get away from the payload. C9 reference a Overwatch team way back when called Cloud9. Ah. And when your group is away from the payload and lose the game, it's called C9. Uh, well, I'm used to that because I always lose. <laughs> oh god, no! So anywho, so stressful. <laughs> but anyway, we get back to Ponyville and see our heroes try to do a bit of gardening, and it fails. And they say that they've been at it for hours now, and oh, man, we, we we not even did a dent to it. And guess who comes? So the Saint Luna blasting their way through and stuff, and so does Starshold the bearded. And Starswell here just says, no problem, I can help the sisters with their gardening and stuff. And Twilight says to uh, Starswell, saying that Starswell, the Tree of Harmony is destroyed. And Starswell says, I know, I felt it when it was destroyed. A part of me kind of withered or something like that. And there's a Star Wars reference to this. Remember, Silva? Yes, I do, but part of me wants to see if Sapphire is worth it. <laughs> Nope. Aww, Not a word. Aww. Well, I felt a great disturbance in the force, as if a million voices cried out and were suddenly silenced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that one I've heard. Oh, oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> come on. Safi, come on. You either heard well, it yeah, or Yeah, everyone knows uh, I feel a disturbance in the force, as if a... Well, most people don't actually know the as if a... If they don't watch Star Wars, but... I somehow came across that part. Sha, as if. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But anyway, but anyway. Star Swirl and the princess do a bit of gardening. And I have to say, I have to personally say that I'm a bit disappointed that the pillars didn't come in to help in. Like, you just imagine the old six come in with the princesses doing a bit of gardening. That would be so cool. 
Yeah, let's garden. Yeah, yeah Rocco would have been, been perfect, perfect for the job. job. I know. And oh, could you just imagine, uh, Miss Me? Yeah, she she was a gardener. So yeah, perfect job. Quick, get the hose. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. No, no, I mean the gardening tools. <laughs> but anywho, our main seven teleports to Cantalot and sees that, oh no, there's a resistance. And they brought up the bridge. Genius. Something that the catalog guards didn't do. I know. That's my point. Why they're useless. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Pinkie Pie says, oh no, uh, our friends, they're all being brainwashed. And they're in our way. Uh, we, we can't hurt them, can we? No. And Rainbow Dash says, oh, see, I am not going to go through them. I'm going to go above them. And oh no, I've been stopped by my uh, workmates, the Wonder Balls. This is bad. Ooh, what do I do? What do I do? Ooh, and personally for me, by this time around, oh, wait, no. I have to hurt my friends? Hey, wait, that guy owes me 20 bits and haven't paid me yet. Oh, I will take this opportunity to set up a debt. But even Norman, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, apparently he's hard up for cash. <laughs> he's slowly turning to the dark side. <laughs> uh, I could just imagine some fanfic going like, Oh, I have to hurt people just to go through? Well, okie dokie dokie! <laughs> Actually, I just realized, look at these photos, Pistachio is in the group Charging Rarity. Oh, really? Like, Aww. Oh, young pistachio. No. Pistachio? Really? He's there? No. No, wait. No, that can't be. No, I think I'm getting my points mixed up. I'm seeing a Pegasus, and he was an Earth Pony. <clears throat> yeah, and charging rarity? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, rarity's group was uh, handled by who now? Uh, Fancy Pants. Yes, I'm getting points mixed up. There's one that reminded me of him, but no, I'm wrong. Either way, it's a hijinks battle until Twilight remembers, hey, I can teleport again. Yeah, but I think the only reason why she didn't want to teleport is to try and save her friends at first. And wait, is that Crystal Pony Guards? Yep. yep. Well, There's... I guess they never got released. Yeah, which really doesn't speak well for King's Shine Armor again. No, but it's I like... thought Crystal Ponies were Earth Ponies. Oh, no, they're Crystal Pegasi. Really? There is? Yeah. 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 Really? Yes. Yeah, in uh, Three's a Crowd, there was a Crystal Pegasus standing guard with Flash Sentry. Oh, okay. I, I always thought that Crystal Ponies were exclusively Earth Ponies. Oh. Nope, there's even a few Crystal Unicorns somewhere in the mix. Oh, okay, all right. Norman, you being speciesist? No, no. How dare. No, it's just I've never seen Crystal Pegasi or Crystal Unicorns. Uh, but anywho, uh, like I mentioned before, Twilight didn't really want to leave their friends like that, but they have to. So she teleported into the castle. And you can see the anguish in her face when she did that. And now she don't have a plan to take care of Sombra. And guess who shows up in Discord? She asks, what are you doing here? And Discord mentions that oh, I was just here putting up posters for your coronation, but it seems that there's been a change of plans. And the rest of the group begs Discord for help, and <laughs> you can clearly tell that he begrudgingly helps them because he would have thought that Twilight and her group would have um, solved this by themselves without any help from, well, the elements or him, whoever the princess. So he took care of the guards, and goes into the throne room where Sombra is there and they ask for Discord's help to deal with Sombra. Sombra blasts some magic power to the group and Discord just snaps it away like it was nothing while having a monologue about, uh, you know, I thought that you guys could do this, but it seems that you need a uh, chaotic help. Well, since you're my friend, I might as well help you, right? And that's what friends do. And to be honest, Sultan Shai is my favorite. And this, and Sombra says, this, ah, she's your favorite, eh? Well, let's see what you do now when I aim for her. And, oh no, my waifu. I got to protect my waifu. And takes a hit from Sombra's magical blast. And Oh no, Discord is dead. Oh no, yeah. And 
this and all the ponies gather around Discord asking if he's alright or not and they they worry for him and without him they can't do anything and the Discord says I'm out like I'm hurt and he does this monologue about you don't need me you don't need the princesses and you certainly don't need the elements of harmony you guys like Fluttershy you always be kind Applejack you're always honest Rarity you're generous Rainbow Dash you're awesome and annoying and also you're loyal and Pinky wherever you go you make people laugh and Twilight, you're the embodiment of uh, read script here. Oh yes, magic. So even before the elements and even before that, you are special. You don't really need all that stuff to do what you need to do. You just need each other and just go kick his butt. And Twilight agrees that yes, we've proved time and time again that we can get through this if we all team up and work together. And, well, gosh darn it, Twilight just proves that they can do it without the princesses or the elements. She fights back, Sombra, and, well, they team up, whole hoofs, and activate their ultra instincts. You mean they all get silver hair? <laughs> no, not really. They just have those creepy white eyes, glowing white eyes. Bright eyes. Glowing Burning like fire. <laughs> and well, Twilight does the Kamehameha blast and this time around disintegrate Sombra. Did you look at that piece of animation? Goodness me! A That's family gonna... show. <laughs> A family picture. Like, 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 that, my goodness. Good thing it was fast. You can only see that in the What's gonna call this gallery and wiki? Ugh. Well, I mean, let's be fair. As Rarity established earlier, he's dispelled into the ether. Yeah, dispelled into the ether. Put into the shadow realm where Mokuba's fighting. Yes. <laughs> so, anywho, with that Kamehameha blast, the day is saved once again by the main six and all of the brainwash and all of the chaos that is happening in the forest has been nullified and yay awesomeness and before we carry on didn't the forest like the ever free forest the the chaotic nature of it isn't it because of discord no he he took advantage of the ever free forest with the plunder vines but oh. it's always just sort of been there so yeah. like, the vines were not okay the vines in this episode are not plunder vines i don't think so Oh, okay. All right. Oh, all right, all right. But anywho, Celestia and Luna walks in and sees that, oh my goodness, this guy's having a waifu party. Hmm. We, we need to stop this. We really need to stop this. Like, we can't have this guy having a harem of his own. It'll be a Japanese anime thing. So no, 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 no. Celestia and Luna comes in, talks to Twilight, and Twilight says that, it was her fault that everything escalated quickly. She have she should have gone to uh, Celestia and Luna and asked for help. And like, it's her fault that she she blames herself. And it was a mistake that not asking for help. And Celestia says that it's true. But what makes a great leader is learning from their mistakes. Twilight Sparkle, you learn from your mistakes, and it was admirable. And we believe that you still can be the ruler of Equestria. Because that she admitted that she was wrong and finds a way to improve herself. But on top of that, um, Twi uh, Princess Celestia and Luna had a lot of fun gardening. I don't have fun gardening. Yeah, I'm not the outdoorsy type. Yeah, but Me you either. Did, you did Although I do like flowers, but no. Celestia and Luna says, um, as for now... We're not going to put you in charge of Canterlot yet. And Discord just says, What? You did, did you know I for the all, all the trouble I go to wasted speech and whatnot? Like, why? Why? And everybody looks at Discord and says, like, You pretended to be hurt? <laughs> you jerk! I did not see that coming. Oh, oh. oh no, not in the least. Well, I mean, seeing Twilight and Fluttershy's reactions, I mean, Fluttershy's, I think she's a little hurt, and Twilight's just ticked off. 
Yeah. But, well, this car speeds off and walks out the window, literally. And Rarity just says, for a person that cares about us, he sure has a funny way of showing it. And Dr. Shai says, oh, that's how he is. And Rainbow Dash just says, yep, that's this corp. I won't expect anything less. Makes sense. Yeah. And they all laugh about the situation and says that when the time comes, we'll be ready to take over Equestria. Yay. And back to the Legion of Doom, we can see Cozy Glow trying to create a motivational speech circle saying that Okay, now T-Rex says something nice about the changeling and Ch- Chrysalis, you say something nice about centaurs and, uh, sorry. No. And, yeah, circle, whatever it is. And it says, never. Gorga comes in looking all pissed and T-Rex says, so how do Sombra do? And Gorga just says, look for yourself. He perish. So let this be a lesson to you all. Whoever do not work together, you lose now. Laugh with me. Ha 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 ha. <clears throat> and I, I, love, I love how nervous they are with their laughter. It's like, they, they know this guy's not playing with a full deck. <laughs> yes. And with that, episode ends. So yeah, this is a great start. This is a really good start for this season. Uh, so let's go to final thoughts. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, I love this opener. I, I had so much fun with both an accelerated version of the standard adventure Plus, then Twilight and Friends hitting in a pretty hard rock bottom as things continue to get worse. And yes, it is fun to see Celestia and Luna actually step up and assist. They don't have to solve the problem for the main six, but they can at least hold the line while they while they work things out. Of course, that comes with the... Uh... <laughs> actually, I love it. Luna says, we left Candlelock defenseless. All it has is those useless guards. <laughs> oh, no. So... I, I do like that they, they, well, there's this definitiveness. There will be an attack by Grogar and the Legion. Their Twilight Friends will eventually take over ruling for Equestria. Mm-hmm. Celestia and Luna will retire, although I still question, why does Luna have to retire? She only just got back in the game. And she's already tired of being a princess. But she's <laughs> the, she's the youngest sister of Celestia. Well, I mean, that's the only reason. What does reason that say that... about your waifu there, Silver? What, that she's the younger sister? No, the fact that she wants to retire after not even being back for as long as... Okay, I, I just have to say something. Like, We all seen or we all heard what Celestia did for the past 2,000 years or so on, whatever it is. Like, Luna, we don't see her doing her job or we don't see her doing any job, but she works at night, she goes into dreams, she, she does things. And could you just imagine... Night in, night out. Go to dream. See this person's dream. Oh, you! I do not need to know that. You, 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 you. I, I need. A, I need to retire. Like, yeah, I, I'm out of this game. Well, that, that's a very pessimistic view. Yeah, I should. I should say. Uh, I'm mostly. I just think that really, Celestia and Luna have always been a set. And so, if it's Celestia's time to step down, then Luna realizes, okay, we're, we're the, the old guard. guard. I missed out on a lot, but. but... It's, it's time, time to step, step aside, aside and let these young youngins take, take over. Or she wise up and thinks about, oh, crap. If Celestia's out, I have to do the finance. And, oh, God, no, 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 no. Uh, you know what? Sister, let me join you in this retirement that you speak of. It sounds fun. So that, that's my take on it. <laughs> but if we're, if we're asking, you know, from the if you ha- want to have a waifu angle, just think... Now she has more time to focus on relationships. <laughs> yes, indeed. Although it's funny, I think uh, Luna said maybe I'll go to Silver Shores, was it? Something like that. Silver something. I, I, could it be Silver Quill? Well, that would be fantastic because uh, <laughs> I'd be mentioned in the show. But no, that we learn later, that's a retirement home. Oh. Oh. They're old. So, so- so, so it's like, like Luna, Luna, I don't, I don't think, think you're quite, quite there, there yet. yet. Oh. Oh. It could be a reference that she heard where retiring means going to that place. Make sense? Hmm. Few things in life do. So, uh, anything else, Silver? Nope. That's it for me. All right. Seppi, what about you? I still think it's a fun episode. It, it was a very good beginning. 
well, beginning of the end, but hey. <laughs> I, I actually did enjoy it, despite, you know, my comments. I, I just honestly couldn't wait to see what the show was going to do after this. Like, I, I kind of want to see the League of Villains try to take over and how they do it. Hmm, true that, true that. And Tara, what about you? I really like this episode from the beginning to the end. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> I, I like the comedy, and I like how... You, uh, like at the first part where they quickly defeat Sombra, I thought, wait a minute, this can't be over already. And then they show that, you know, he's not really, it's not over yet. But I also like too how they were relying on Discord and after Discord's like, okay, fine, I'll help. And then, I mean, we all know he was faking it, but it, he kind of did it in a good way because then he uh, basically gave them the, or taught them that the elements aren't a thing. It's what's inside of them that counts. True that, true that. And as for me, I like this episode. The premiere of season nine has a solid start. It began with, well, like Silver mentioned, a setup for what's going to happen where we know that Twilight and her group are going to be the new rulers of Equestria, probably. And the bad guy, well, it's revealed that he will be the threat of the season. He has some, He we know that he's the ultimate bad guy, but we got no idea what he does else. So we have to wait and see. And to show that how serious they are, or how bad they can be, Sombra just shows how evil he can be by first attacking the Crystal Empire and pretending to be destroyed. Just to know where the secret weapon of the elements, which was where it is and destroy their well secret weapon which is kind of a smart move if you think about it it's just that his ego got into the way and prevented him from taking the win other than that uh, the characters here like uh, the royal uh, family the princesses even the appearance of star soul was a real good addition for the show and well we get to see that hey we, What's going to happen in the future? Like, what's going to be, what's what's the future for Starlight? What's going to be the future for uh, the sisters and whatnot? And we get to see some of it being told to us bit by bit in future episodes. And with Grogar and his group of friends, I do like Grogar's idea where we need to work together to defeat the good guys. And the bad guys here are. Not really trusting until one episode in the future. And that's a really good episode that we can talk about later and stuff. Because uh, this, this season has a lot of good things going for it. That's about it, I guess. I mean, I really like this episode. The ending for it was pretty cool. And Discord. Like, Discord here was smart. Like, they used the trickster trope here in a real good way. And... Do you guys feel that the way that Discord talked at the end where he just told that you guys don't really need the elements or anybody help because you already have it inside you all along? Do you feel like that is force? No. Not really. <coughs> Seppi? Eh, not really. Alright. A little bit, but nah. Because I, I felt like it's kind of a reminder that our main heroes need to well, get reminded of because um, believe believe in yourself or believe in me that believes in you. But anywho, yeah, uh, this episode was a lot of fun and I like it. Yeah, I can't wait for the next episode, which some people might say that it's not that good from what I heard. But anywho, uh, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, we're going to take a little break from Pony just to enjoy a fresh spore of madness. <laughs> yes. Ah. We're going to return to Miraculous, the adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir. Yeah. Yay. It's been a while. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Tara, this is You've your first You've never had to do this yet, so you don't have any right to go. I was being sarcastic about yeah, yay. <laughs> so wait, this is your first time, Tara? Yes. <laughs> Uh, you, no, never you never forget, forget the first, the first time. time. Yep. <laughs> but hey. Yeah, Mr. Kisu Kisu. <laughs> ah, she said it! 
Okay, so what? <laughs> anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themaceygmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at India Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter <laughs> under MLP Silver Quill. You can also find me on DeviantArt under the same name. If you do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, I shall appear. And on Wednesdays, I am on Equestria Daily, posting a comic or editorial review. Awesome, awesome. And you're starting on something new, right? Something new. For the comics? Because, like you mentioned before, you already finished all of the comics that are published. I think I've got just the 2013 annual left, and that's it. Ah, yes. So, in between, you do editorials on characters from the comics and so on, and something like that, if I remember yeah. right. Yep, there'll be thing. There's, there's still plenty to talk about. Go check it out on Equestria Daily, because it's a lot of fun. You'll get to see, well, there's a lot of things there. You just go and watch. You just go and watch. So, anywho, Safi, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt, Twitter, and many other forms of media under the name Anime Christy. I'm currently working on some stuff for Bronicon, and maybe I'll go and check it out. Maybe see what's going on on my end. Hey! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Did, by the way, did you check out Nintendo Direct, the new Pokemon thingy? Yes, I did. Yeah. I've already made the Wooloo. I showed you. <laughs> yeah, the Wooloo's cute. The Wooloo's cute. Cute, cute, cute. Uh, but anywho, uh, Tara, where can the good people find you? Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, TV, Night, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. And if the kind people will do want, they could find me on Patreon also under the same name. Awesome, awesome. Go check him out. Go support the good man because he really deserves it. And yeah, um... <laughs> Tara, you check out the Pokemon Direct too? <laughs> well, come on, my name's based off of a Pokemon. Of course I saw it. Yeah, did you see the Mega Battle or the huge battle thingy? The Dynamax? Yeah. That's just insane. I'm, I, I'm very curious how Wailoid's going to be in that thing. <laughs> I'm just curious if uh, a Totara's going to be there because it'll be like in the movies. Ah, true, true. And then they're going to have a place called the Torterra Garden. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I can't wait to review that one. So, anywho, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on politicallife.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's access to the review and discussion podcast and exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Nine. Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Mr. Like, Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. I am a weeb who refuses to watch Star Wars. And I am Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> ah, I miss that sound. It's great to have him back. Yeah. yeah. By the way, if it could come in like three years in order to get me into Common Writer, I'm sure it'll probably take you longer to get me into Star Wars. Just saying. I don't know. I mean, Common Writer is another culture, another time, and a longer series. Star Wars is really only three movies. I mean, there's a lot of Common Writers, no? True. And Silver, don't you mean there's six movies? Sorry, nine? No. <laughs>